So Jonathan Reynolds, the Shadow Business Secretary, was on Newsnight last night, being interviewed by Victoria Derbyshire, and she specifically questioned him about Keir Starmer's pledges that he'd broken up until this point, and how voters' trust in Keir Starmer is going to be important come the election, given how much he's u turned on. And this is really worth a watch. Why should voters trust Sir Keir Starmer, whether it's his five missions or his six first steps, when he's either ditched or rolled back on so many of his original promises? And they should look at Keir Starmer and say, here is someone who has turned around the Labour Party. No, 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 in no, a way no, sorry, you completely ignored the question. You completely ignored my question. Why should they trust him when he's ditched or rolled back so many of his original I, I don't think that's true. I think he stood for the that's Labour Party. absolutely true. Saying he could be a Labour that's Prime Minister. That's absolutely true. When no. he wanted... No, well, let me just give you some examples, if I may, Mr Reynolds. When he wanted to become Labour leader, he said he would abolish tuition fees. He said he would defend freedom of movement. All gone. Then he promised there would be this big offer of £28 billion a year for the green transition. He's rolled back on that. They, those are just three examples. There are more. He has put forward a set of missions that he wants to achieve no, in government. you're ignoring we, no, my no, question. No, no, but let me just finish the point. No, on let, things like the 28 I, I'd billion, be really grateful if you could answer the question. Well, 28 Why billion was not possible after Liz Truss. It wasn't. Interest rates were not the same after that mini-budget. We've got to be honest with people and say, these are our ambitions, but this is how we're going to deliver them. And when you've got a situation like that, there was simply no way we could do that. But look at what we're proposing on GB Energy, on a National Wealth Fund, on real ambition, on net zero, to get the economic benefits of that for the UK. You, OK, let me give you some other examples. Let me give you some other examples, which are nothing to do with the, the economic outlook. Workers' rights. Originally, you were going to ban zero-hours contracts. That's not happening anymore. Yes, it is. A yes, it is. Absolutely, no, no, it is. No, no, no. Is. you're not banning zero hour, hour yes, contracts. We, we had this we whole are, conversation with union leaders. We are banning exploitative leaders. zero hours contracts. That There's is part of our new deal for working people. You were going to abolish the House of Lords. That's free. You're not doing that anymore. Well, look, those, no, those are some more examples. And I come back to the question: Why should voters trust Sir Keir Starmer? to do what he says he's going to do this time. Because he has a record of public service and he has a record of how he has transformed the Labour Party. First of all, I'd like to say, why isn't every single BBC interviewer like Victoria Derbyshire? Why can't every BBC interviewer actually press these guests when they won't answer the question? This is exactly what we need to see from our journalists in this country. And they just don't do it. They don't just press our politicians to actually answer the questions that they've been asked or to misdirect or to straw man and answer the question that they want to answer rather than actually answering the question that's being put towards them. So kudos to Victoria Derbyshire for continually trying to move him back into the question that was being asked here. I just wish that more journalists would use the phrase, do you think my viewers are stupid? To try and get people to understand that they can't just treat voters like they're idiots. They have to answer questions. They have to be truthful. They have to be in the somewhat sincere in the answers that they give. And quite frankly, I think that we should be replacing every single journalist in the BBC who is supposed to question politicians with Victoria Derbyshire specifically. When you look at, for example, Laura Coonsberg on the BBC, in what way is she supposed to be able to properly scrutinise politicians if she won't let them answer questions? Be pressed into actually giving a correct answer to the question that's being asked here. This is the correct way of political journalism. Now let's actually discuss here, let's actually discuss what's going on with Jonathan Reynolds' answer. So first of all, when he actually answers the questions, in the way that he wants to answer it, not an actual direct answer to the question, what he's saying here, first of all, is that or we have to kiss Tom as a man who's had public service. I'm like, well, that means nothing to me. That means nothing to him. What, his time as the Director of Public Prosecutions, where he deported somebody for stealing a scoop of ice cream? Or the meddling in the Julian Assange case that the CPS did during that period? Now, I don't buy it. I don't buy that this is a man of integrity that you're trying to spin to me here, at least from his time as the DPP. Or maybe his time as a lawyer in the 90s and early 2000s is a different time period. But the DPP is not the way you're going to be able to sell this man to me as top cop, for example. The second thing he says is that, well, we've got these missions. And I'm like, well, unless you actually tell me how you're going to put those missions together, then that means nothing to me. And second of all, that shouldn't detract from the fact that you've made these promises specifically that you've then broken. I mean, we all know that these, pro these promises were broken deliberately because they were never meant to be held. They were lies to the Labour membership. We know this from the internal polling that Labour together did specifically, which was a way of them being able to poll the internal membership find ways that you could be able to get them to vote for you in the leadership election and then not have to bother actually adhering to those promises once you were campaigning to a public who's a different electorate. 
So we know that these are people who are already untrustworthy. And then the next point he makes is that, oh, well, we couldn't do the £28 billion investment because bond yields have increased, interest rates have gone up. And this is nonsense. It's not just nonsense in terms of like modern monetary theory, my preferred method of economic analysis, macroeconomic analysis. Under Rachel Reeves' fiscal rules, of course, there has to get debt to GDP ratio down at the end of five years. But in Rachel Reeves' May's lecture, she said that they want to be able to take away state assets that are gained as a result of borrowing from the borrowing figures because you're gaining assets rather than just increasing levels of liability. So the 28 billion was an investment. It was going to increase state assets. So it wouldn't even violate the fiscal rules for them to do it, especially since it's borrowing for investment specifically and wouldn't have impacted their goal to get debt to GDP falling at the end of the five year period. So this is all just nonsense that Mr. Reynolds is coming out with here. All just total nonsense. And then the last point I would put towards is Victoria Dubbish was again correct to say that well, hang on, you can't just dodge all of the non-economic questions here. House of Lords reform, that's being ditched. Things like votes for people moving in from the European Union, that's being ditched as a policy. Loads of things have been ditched that are not economic in nature, but have been scaled back to try and make them seem quote unquote electable to what Morgan Lewis Sweeney termed bomb-proof the manifesto. I mean, what, the, what, what you're left with is just nothing. It was nothing. And even then, a lot of the economic proposals make more sense after the pandemic, after Liz Truss, their little get out of jail free cards for doing nothing. Oh, we can't do things in the war in Ukraine. Well, you can do that. You can do all of these things. And one of the main things is the red line is no taxation on the rich, no wealth taxes, no increases in capital gains taxes. The argument for all of those things which were the kind of things laid out in the original set of proposals towards the Labour membership, were more important now that the rich have massively increased their wealth after the pandemic. Why has that been ditched? These are the questions that Labour need to answer. Because of course the real answer is that they just don't care. They don't care that they lie to us. They don't care they've changed their positions. They don't care about losing votes or losing support because they feel like the left will vote for them regardless.